If you're looking for magic cards, look no further than Flipside Gaming. They have all the latest magic singles and product that you need to actually leave the house and battle in Magic the Gathering. And right now, if you would like to save 10% on your orders from Flipside Gaming, use the promo code CGB at checkout. That is promo code CGB. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. And today we're looking, we're looking at a deck that I built that I call Taking Things. Uh, a best of one, I would say, re kind of casual deck, not really a top tier deck, but it can hold its own with some good draws. And it's certainly more fun to play than the same mono white, mono red, or Teferi lists over and over. It's a good little break from the tier one meta, I would say. Because, quite honestly, taking things, stealing stuff, and using it against your opponent is just one of those things that, when you do it in Magic, you really love doing it. And when you are the person who it gets done to, oh, you really hate it. You really hate it. So this is a deck that specializes in taking your opponent's stuff and turning it against them. We have many ways to do it. Direfleet Daredevil is a card that can use the opponent's spells out of their graveyard against them. Thief of Sanity takes cards straight out of the deck and lets you cast them for free once it hits. Hostage Taker takes your opponent's stuff and plays it. Eldest Reborn can get your opponent's things out of their graveyard and use them against them. And Angrath the Unchained can steal even the mighty 12-12 Galta and smack your opponent with it. We also have Argyle's Bloodfast in the deck. If you can flip Argyle's Bloodfast into the Temple of Aquazots, you can sacrifice a creature to gain life equal to the creature's toughness. It provides a bit of a steal and sack feel that stays in the deck. Angrath, going back to good old Active Treason Costly Plunder, Angrath can steal that big creature, and then you can sacrifice it to gain that life with the Temple of Aklazots. Aside from that, we're just filling things out. Nicole Bolas, it's Grixis. You have to be greedy. This is the patron saint of greed right here, Nicole Bolas, and uh, certainly should be in the deck if we're gonna play those colors. Rekindling Phoenix is a resilient threat that also just goes well with the rest of the deck. If the opponent uses their Lava Coils, and the Vraska's Contempts dealing with Bolas and Thief of Sanity, Rekindling Phoenix can be very hard to handle. You can also sacrifice it to Temple of Aklazots over and over for three life a turn to help rebuild from a bad position. And Kitesail Freebooter comes on the battlefield and tries to clear the way and just be a lightning rod for these other cards, which I found a lot better than Thought Erasure and Duress for this specific deck because we have a lot of ways to get back creatures, replay creatures, Nicole Bolas gets back creatures, and Eldest Reborn re brings them back. So I'm liking the Freebooter. It also gives a tiny bit of a pirate theme because we have Hostage Taker, Freebooter, and Daredevil. So it's a nifty little Grixis pirate deck along with Angrath, the Unchained hanging out. So we've got some of that Ixalan flavor. And what do pirates like to do? Steal your stuff. What does this deck like to do? Use that stuff against you. So I think it will make for some fun games and a bit of a break from the color challenge and the top tier grind away meta which i've been doing a lot of because of ranked and i hope you'll enjoy them see you in the games we're on the draw we have two lands they are our colors we have a blood fast and a daredevil that isn't likely to matter i'm going to try we'll give it a shot there's always the chance if we're against a slow deck the Bloodfast can draw us into more stuff. Turn one to rest. Okay. That is something you don't see every day in best of one. Opponents having to think about it. I think it's easily the Bloodfast. I mean, it kind of... It can bridge me to my other cards, and nothing else is even castable. However, that Dire Fleet Daredevil means we get to dress them back when we find our third land. Eldest Reborn gets selected. I'm honestly surprised, but maybe there is more hand disruption to come. Maybe that's the play of somebody with a turn two Thought Erasure. Or second Duress. Okay, black green. Foily's magic art Lenoir Elves. 
I'm trying to decide if it's worth the two life to play on curve, but I think it is. So, yep, we'll get Bloodfast out this turn, Daredevil next turn, and then hopefully we start the Phoenixes and their rekindling soon. So, Memorial to Folly, Jade Light Ranger, more Golgari. And here's a Lava Coil off the top. I think I'd rather duress and see what's cooking. There's a chance we won't hit anything, but there's also a chance we hit Vivian Reed or some other Planeswalker. And we hit Find and Vraska's Contempt. So Contempt is very good against Phoenix. Finality really isn't. And Find, we have Exile effects, so I'm taking Contempt. I'm taking Contempt away. Not only that, this Dire Devil is now a good little blocker for these Explorer creatures. And our opponent's hand isn't very exciting. We still have to draw land to fix our issues. But I think we're doing okay. That Seeker Squire being a 2-3 can give some beats. But one little Daredevil can hold off a lot of Explorer junk. And there is a Freebooter to take out the Find. Yeah, let's go for it, I suppose. Better than letting them have the option. And we may as well get in there before they use it, cast it, do something with it. Plus, we have a flying body. So, what's down here? Just a Llanowar Elf. Nothing exciting. They're relying on the top of their deck to feed them some Planeswalkers, some Carnage Tyrants. Some Chupacabras. <laughs> sure. Takes out the Freebooter, though. I mean, I get it. You want that back, but is the Freebooter stopping all your attackers from doing anything? No. No, it is not. <laughs> okay, the opponent's thinking, I'm going to get Jade Light into my graveyard, then I'm going to find my Jade Light, then I'm going to do nonsense that way. Well, I'll oblige you. Fine by me. Everything dies eventually. These land bricks, though, are starting to tilt me a little. Let's... Hmm... Hmm. What to do? I think the opponent's definitely going to be attacking with Chupa to try to get Chupa back. So I could coil it away. I could also try to draw into my land. Yeah, let's be aggressive. If we hit our lands, we should be able to pull this off. All right, two more life. And now I'm going to exile the Chupacabra so it can't come back. Which, you know, that's it's interesting because it doesn't slow down the Squire. But getting that Chupa completely exiled means the Folly and the Find don't abuse us. And the opponent wants to get their Jade Light Explorer on, which is... It's alright. It's like, you know, Scry 2. Okay. It might help you find stuff. It got two lands off the top of your deck that would have made for a couple of very sad draw steps. Nothing wrong with that, but it's definitely not the most impactful use of a find, so I'm not upset about it. And the opponent wants to keep on sending in the Explorer creatures to keep recycling them. That's okay with me. Doesn't bother me. Uh, Bolus would just hit a land here and is a long way from flipping, whereas Rekindling Phoenix, if they don't find Vraska's Contempt, can be a real hassle. Changes the temperature in the room, especially with two of them. It's time to start throwing the big flyers at the opponent. So, is it Memorial to Folly, or do they have another find? They only have one creature in the graveyard, so I'm guessing it's the Folly. And they say go. That smells like a Vraska's Contempt, but I'm going to test them. We're going to send in the Phoenix. I'm really thinking about it. I wonder. Cast down, perhaps? All right, second Phoenix. Again, Bolas right now hits a land. I would rather try to have a more impactful bolus. 
Plus, it's a lot easier to remove by the likes of Chupacabra, and it's not like we're threatening to flip it anytime soon. Our opponent found their Carnage Tyrant. They, they'll be dancing in the streets. Yeah, here we go again. They want this stuff in their graveyard. I will oblige you. We have eight in the air. Our opponent is at 14. We want to get within range here or we can kill them in the air. And now the opponent's picking out their cards with find, which, yeah, you got some explore things. That does mean if they draw Wild Growth Walker, they're in a happy place, but they're not going to wait to see that. They're gonna try to get a look right now and find another land on top. Oh, there's Angrath. What does Angrath do? Can steal a Branch Walker. It's not the most impressive thing in the world. Can tick up and hit a card. Also not the most impressive thing in the world when we know that they have these kind of nasty cards in their hand. So, if we play the Bolas, then we have the Daredevil. Assume that something dies. Assume that there's a Chupacabra off the top. Daredevil blocking Branch Walker, we take nine. We are not dead. So, because of that, I feel like I can attack with both Rekindling Phoenix. So, let's do it. Try to race him down. Here comes Nikki. And here is a tap land. Do your thing. Bloodfast waiting to flip over here. If we go below five. And what will happen in the big turn? Here's the Jade Light Ranger. Jade Light Ranger will see two more land. Gotta say, this must be said, they have drawn plenty of land. And there's a whole lot of thinking going on. Is it the prelude to an epic comeback? Or is it the prelude to a scoop? Time will tell. The drama. But there's nothing for us to do. Our job is done. Other than, of course, paying attention and trying to pick up any signals. Our opponent plays another land, so we know they have two other lands in hand. There's only one mystery card left. And here come the dorks. So... Let's go ahead and block an elf and block a branch walker, take eight damage and go to just two. I don't know of a way for the uh, Golgari deck to pump or deal direct damage. I think it's a worthy risk. Finality, sweeping the board. All the finalities were drawn, my friends, but it won't be good enough because Rekindling Phoenix is coming back. I suppose we are hoping I miss target, which you can do. So first, second. Let's not miss target. And that is the game. This hand has a Dire Fleet. Not sure if there will be a target for it, but it's still there. We might just need the blocker. Then at four, we have Kindling Phoenix and Hostage Taker available, along with the colors on the play. So I think it is just enough. I would love to draw Thief of Sanity. Just have something to slide into that three spot and nothing quite, nothing quite as fun in a stealing your stuff deck as a Thief of Sanity. So please, gods of magic, hear my cry. The Onan Vanguard to start off the to start the party for the opponent. Now, when I see that, I think immediately my opponent doesn't play any spells, which means let's get Dire Fleet Daredevil on the battlefield. They might have Pride of the Conquerors or Heroic Reinforcements, but hitting those with Daredevil mm, might come up someday, but I doubt it will be this day. 
And that 2-1 first strike can actually hold off a lot of little dorks. There's a pride mate. That's going to need to get coiled. Yep, opponent checking. Yeah, that's first strike. That's how that works. Let's just get rid of your pride mate before it even gets a chance to grow. And let's hold the opponent off. I'm not in a rush to deal them damage. We should be the stronger deck going later into the game than a white deck that opens one drop, two drop, typically. Nobody's perfect. Uh, Militia Bugler, another pride mate. Must be nice. Hostage Taker is probably going to have to have to have a word with you. And here is the Rekindling Phoenix, which is usually pretty hard to deal with, but white has exile effects. Conclave Tribunal is something we have to watch out for. Our opponents had no problems hitting land drops, and here comes the Johnny's Pride Mate and another Vanguard to make it even bigger. And there's a 4-4 Pride Mate. I do want to make absolute sure that I get rid of this Pride Mate, so I'm going to play the Eldest Reborn now and Hostage Taker next turn. It does mean the opponent will have a large Pride Mate for a turn. I can hopefully chump it with Rekindling Phoenix for that turn. I'm sure the opponent will get rid of their Bugler, keeping their Vanguards, thinking of all the joy that it will give them when they pump up their Pride Mate. No, no, they get rid of the Bu they get rid of the Vanguard. Interesting. Unnatural discipline. We also need something to get back with our Eldest Reborn, so chumping away with like Direfleet Daredevil or getting our Phoenix into the graveyard and having the egg somehow removed isn't that bad. Although, with white, I don't know what would remove the egg. Maybe a baffling end is something that can't target the phoenix. Here's Dawn of Hope, our opponent taking their life gain seriously. Very seriously. And no attacks. All right? Discard a card, please. I'm a little worried about Ixalan's Binding. But let's... Let's tag the opponent with the Phoenix. We've got to start the clock somehow. Let's drop off our Hostage Shaker. Let's take their Pride Mate for our own. And now if we can find a way to also gain some life with our deck, we'll be rolling. It is um, There is a Vanguard here. So we might assemble our own Vanguard combo using the Eldest Reborn. And yeah, part of the joy of this deck is playing your opponent's deck for them. Adato Vanguard's here. Um, I mean, it's hard to really block it well. Oh, there is a Tribunal. What will it target? Phoenix seems like the obvious target. But there is that whole Pride Mate thing coming back together. Decisions, decision, decisions. Will you let me assemble the Pride Mate combo? Or will you take the Phoenix? And I think taking the Rekindling Phoenix is right. I wonder why the opponent left the Vanguard. Ooh, Thief of Sanity. The reason for the season, at least for this deck, is Thief of Sanity. May I has this Vanguard now? The opponent's holding priority on an Adanto Vanguard indestructible trigger. It happens. I can't say I've never done it myself. You think you're tapped out. You're like, okay, my turn's over. I'm just going to go do something. Read the Reddits. Look on the Twitches. Type a comment. No, you're holding priority. Opponent's like, ugh, Why? Let's take that action. Let's have a 3-3. Three, three. Now, does the opponent gang block it? That's the question. I think they would. They can pay the life for this, so they're just trading a bugler for a pride mate. So I don't think now is the time to be aggressive. I don't think this is the time. But let's send out the Thief of Sanity. And I'm going to continue making my land drops every turn because with Thief getting cards... 
And with potential hostage takers and such, we may need all of our lands. And bluffing, bluffing the unknown isn't worth it if it takes us off playing what we need to play in the future. Our opponent top decked History of Benalia. It's a powerful card, but it doesn't deal with the Thief, and it doesn't deal with the Pride Mate. Now the Vanguard trigger drawing some Dawn of Hope cards. That might help them find what they need. So I can put something in the way, and what I want to do is put the Hostage Taker in the way, because if I draw another Eldest Reborn, I want to be able to get Hostage Taker out of the graveyard. So that's a pretty easy block to me. I trade it for four life, and I have a, a good card with an ETB in the graveyard. Swamp off the top. Let's move to combat, gain our life, pump our, van our Pride Mate, who's staying home because I still think that our opponent might be able to outrace us with a few good draws like Benelish Marshall. But the Thief of Sanity is, the Thief of Sanity is going to start nabbing some toys. Go get me some. Show me something good. Thief of Sanity, basically like Santa riding on what looks like some kind of a dragon instead of a sleigh. And look what you got me for Christmas. Another pride mate. As I'm recording this, it's two days after Christmas, but the holiday spirit is strong with this one. Your go. Our opponent's not getting used to the Vanguard clicking just yet, but hopefully they will. And I should say a Danto Vanguard. They do have a Leonin Vanguard as well. And there's an Ajani's Welcome. The trigger hell is about to take place, my friends. Uh, life gain trigger hell. Oh, man. Still, our opponent can't draw that many cards if they don't have more land. So they're a bit bottlenecked on land right now. Our pride mates are growing, and Thief of Sanity is doing its work. Let's get in there. Well, I guess we don't know what we could draw. Let's go see what we get with this thief. And let's see what we can do with their life gain combo deck see if we can get enough life gain going to out combo them come on thiefy get me something good it's a conclave tribunal that is something i want uh we can get back the phoenix with it fountain of renewal is okay gideon's reproach is something to watch out for in the future and I think if my opponent had a Gideon's Reproach, they would not have tapped out that turn. So I'll take the Tribunal. I'm not afraid of being attacked by the War Leader, to be completely honest. I can eat it with a Pride Mate. I can eat the Cat Tokens as well. They can create some life gain triggers. My opponent can draw cards, but then we can use Freebooter next turn to see what they drew and take the best of it. These knights are about to grow. That is a bit concerning, but I think that having another rekindling of rekindling Phoenix to put in front of one of them is a pretty good way to dissuade them. So, History of Benalia, Chapter 3. The knights become a 4-3. The Resplendent Angel joins the battlefield. How many life gain triggers can they do? This is one, two... Three, four, five, six. So they will get the angel to go off, which is a big problem. It's in the way of my thief, and so is the angel it's going to make. This game is not over. Man, if I had hit a resplendent angel there. Oh my goodness. It is about to get exciting in here. The opponent does have to throw away the war leader to make it hap to make it happen. Let's see. Uh, they're willing to, for sure. Vanguard's coming at me. The Knight Tokens are coming at me. Hmm. The opponent's going to try to win this like a race. I don't know. I don't know about that. We have 23 life. All right. So let's get our freebie blocks. You taking out you and you taking out you. So we get those tokens gone. Uh, we could also take out the Bugler, which I guess is a little bit better than killing the token. Like so. The war leader has to die and a phoenix has to trade with something. So it may as well take down war leader. 
and then pride mate will eat one of these knights and there you go oh my gosh if we can somehow gain control of that angel if we can get another hostage taker and then get enough life gain triggers ourselves i want to play the angel side of this let's see if we can get that lucky Give me back my phoenix, please. There's the Angrath. Well, we can get a hold of the angel. And kill it. Our opponent still has this 4-4, so Thief of Sanity is temporarily grounded. But then they don't have great attacks next turn. The 4-4 doesn't go through the phoenix well, and the Angrath can start ticking up. I think that's pretty legit. We don't have enough life gain to trigger Resplendent Angel. <laughs> so we could send the Angel in. If we attack with it, the opponent blocks and they block with their 4-4, then they're not blocking the Thief of Sanity. But if they block the Thief of Sanity anyway, the Thief will die. We could send the Phoenix in, but then we're open up to a Vigilance hit on Angrath, which isn't ideal. Still, maybe the opponent didn't read the card. We may as well attack with the Angel if we're not going to do anything else with it. We could also send in some big, beefy Pride Mates. <clears throat> Let's see. The opponent's next attack isn't exactly going to be very scary. They could gang block on the pride mate. I don't think that's particularly great as they give up their 4-4 flyer. So I think that the biggest pride mate attacking is completely fine. Punish them a little for such an aggressive swing last turn. That feels nice. I don't want to throw this one in because actually trading for these... Well, I still need a way to block the vanguard too. So perhaps that's why we're keeping it back. Is that a good reason? Yeah, I think that's a good reason. All right, you two, go get them. And I think the easy block is angel on angel, although that may be emotionally difficult. Thank you, Angrath. Thank you for being my top deck. I appreciate you so much right this minute. Now, I'm going to play the Freebooter even without a target. And the idea is, if the opponent removes my Phoenix somehow, I don't want to have to give up my Thief of Sandy to keep my Angrath. Angrath taking cards out and ticking up can provide residual um, advantage every turn. Just incremental advantage, I mean. And we may really need it in this matchup. Because... Our opponent has a draw engine, they have a life engine, so we need a card engine to, com to compete. And if Angrath gets big enough, it can take this angel and clear the skies again for our thief. Although our opponent will see a lot of cards before we can really get away with that. I don't think they have any good attacks here though. Not really. Wow, conceding in that spot. That was an interesting game we had going. I'm a little disappointed, but I'll take the win. All right, we're on the play. We have our colors, which is always important. We have a lava coil and some later game stuff. I think we can keep it. We're really leaning on the lava coil and we'll need to draw another land, but I think that's totally fair. Usually three lands, four spells is right where you want to be. Looks like another opponent has decided to open up on Mono Red today. And we'll just kick it over. I want to make sure that they don't have Runaway Steamkin before I kill the Get to Lava Runner. As Runaway Steamkin's the most scary early game threat that they have. Instead, it looks like they just want to go straight to Warlord's Fury Shock. Okay. In that case, 
Well, we could play out the blood fast, but I don't see any use for the blood fast right now. Let's go ahead and coil away their only creature for the moment. And for three mana, what is it? What could it be? Risk factor. Yes, of course. Uh, I'll take four. Then we'll play the Rekindling Phoenix and start getting to work on their life total a bit. Probably draw some fire for the Rekindling Phoenix. They usually have to shoot it twice to get rid of it. Or a Lava Coil is a good card for it as well when they have it. And this opponent came prepared. That's fine though. Let's hit him up Bolus. I don't want to hit with the Freebooter just yet. Uh, definitely the way that the game has been going. I think the opponent has more removal spells in hand. Freebooter wants to get their last removal spell, and hopefully when they're tapped out as well, a dual shot into the graveyard. Our opponent is a collection of all the cheap red cards they could find. That's, that's what I've decided is going on here. So, we don't have anything in the graveyard for Eldest Reborn yet, so let's get the Freebooter going. What do you got? Wow! Just wow. Okay. I don't want more things getting exiled, because then you can't get them back with the Eldest Reborn. Uh, these are the same cost. Some can go face. The opponent may try to ignore our Freebooter, though. So if I take a burn spell, I guess they're more priced into removing it. So, uh, Wizard's Lightning is the most expensive one. I'll take the Lightning Strike away, but what a hand. What a hand. Just all the removal, all the time. And there's a blood fast. If we get below five and flip it, it can become very useful. What I'm wondering is if my opponent's ever going to play with more creatures. Yep. Yeah. Well, you, you, you did, you tried, free booties. You tried. Um, getting them to discard a card could be helpful here. And then Reborn can also bring back the Freebooter. And I think that waiting to see if my opponent plays another creature might just be a foolish errand. They, they're they such, um, such a burn-heavy deck. It just may never happen. Never mind. <laughs> How wrong can I be today? Oh, I could be more wrong. Just wait. They drew another Wizard's Lightning. This is getting so obscene. All right. Discard a card. We got rid of your Lightning Strike. Let's play our Hostage Taker. Give me your Pyromancer. Haha. -ha. And let's replay your Pyromancer and do some damage to you. We're at seven, so two more damage to us flips the Blood Fast, which could be pretty key. And now we have an Angrath waiting here to probably nail their last card. Lava Coil, your Hostage Taker. Yep. But here comes the trigger. Let's get our Freebooter. Actually, Freebooter's got this. Freebooter's going for your last card. The Flame of Keld! Out of there. All right. I think I like getting Angrath ticking. The other option of, like, hostage taking my own thing or whatever seems a bit silly. Because I could have given my opponent back the Flame of Kel, then recast the Hostage Taker to take it back. There's not a lot of point to that. That's a bit of wheel spinning we don't need. But Fire and Steel over here can lower the clock, which is a big deal at the moment. I imagine we may see the Risk Factor. Oh, just straight Lightning Strike face. Lightning Strike. Lightning Strike. Let's transform this Blood Fast. And draw the Rekindling Phoenix. Yes, please. All right. This does give a creature haste. Hmm. I wonder if that means I should play Rekindling Phoenix. I could minus to give it haste, take my opponent to seven. Then they're dead next turn. It reduces the clock to a, a two-turn clock, which means they never get to take advantage of Risk Factor. And the Temple gains three life before we sacrifice it to the Angrath. So I like this play. It's a little off the wall and a little different. I'm not positive it's the right play, but I like this play. And uh, showing you something cool, something fun to do. That is definitely a big part of what we do here on the show. So we give our Phoenix haste. We attack. 
We do the damage, knocking our opponent down to just seven life. We sacrifice the Phoenix to the temple. It makes an egg token, we gain some life, and now they have to kill the egg before the next um, upkeep. And we have the ability to attack for a seven and win the game next turn if they do not. And there's the scoop. Well, today's games were exciting, and I hope that you, too, will find the great pleasure in taking your opponent's stuff and using it against them. One of the things that just seems to viscerally affect Magic players, you seem to love to do it, and you seem to hate being the recipient of it. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. My YouTube channel is proudly supported by HauntedFlower.com, shipping officially licensed apparel anywhere in the world, and now featuring Magic the Gathering apparel and accessories. If you use the promo code CGB at your checkout, you can save 10% on any order. That's the promo code CGB at checkout on HauntedFlower.com. That's HauntedFlower.com.